What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here. Welcome to Tricky Gym, and check me out. We are back to doing some deck profiles. So super stoked about this. These are some of the top decks that I'm going to be showing off heading into the North American International Championship, starting things off with Zach Taylor's top eight list from the Madison Regional Championships. This is an Ultra Necrozma Malamar deck. Very cool. It's got a lot of interesting things going on. I think that uh, we could potentially add a couple different things heading into the future metagame here at the North American International Championships. There are a couple more cards to consider including, but this is a strong place to start for sure. And I just want to showcase successful lists here on the channel, make sure that we're doing that as well. Zach's list starts off with four NK and three Malamar. A four, three Malamar line is the backbone acceleration for this deck. Malamar, of course, with that psychic recharge ability, bringing psychic energies back from the discard pile to uh, your benched Pokemon. And then to take advantage of that ability, we've got two Ultra Necrozma GX, two Dawn Wings GX, got two Tapu Lele for support and occasionally attacking, a Mimikyu, a Mew, and a Giratina promo. And that's it for the Pokemon for this deck. And I like the division of Pokemon that we have here. I feel like a 4-3 Malamar line is enough. That's what I feel like is the bare minimum. I do not like a 3-3 Malamar line since a lot of your games will hinge on whether or not you were able to get enough Inke into play early in the game. So 4 Inke is a must-have in my opinion, but 3 Malamar, you can get by with 3 Malamar. The odds of you getting 4 Malamar into play and even needing 4 Malamar in play are not very high at all. 3 Malamar usually gets the job done, and usually the deck can operate with 2 Malamar just fine since you're going to be manually attaching for turn, then accelerating twice, and that's usually the board state that you're rocking with. So 4 3 works appropriately. In some decks, like a 4 4, I feel like the more psychic oriented Malamar decks really do like a 4 4 line since Necrozma GX sometimes uh, needs that extra oomph to get through things like. Like Zorark and stuff like that. But for this version of the deck, 4-3, totally appropriate. And then, of course, we've got Ultra Necrozma GX with that Photon Geyser attack taking advantage of the Psychic Acceleration and also the Metal Energies that we have in deck in order to pull off huge Photon Geysers. So, uh, Zach used this very effectively in his top 8 run, but also surprisingly used Sky Scorching Light GX a number of times. Was able to finish off games with this unique GX attack. Didn't think that it would be a very big deal going Going into uh, this format, but Sky Scorching GX can actually steal some games. Uh, you can only use the attack if the total of both remaining uh, both players' remaining prize cards is six or less, and you put six damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon. Can easily take a bonus prize or two by knocking out weak Pokemon like Inkay or maybe Froakie, things like that, that have 60 hit points. Uh, Ultra Necrozma can take advantage of that and kind of sneak that in. Sometimes opponents don't even see that attack coming. Or if you happen to have damaged a Pokemon maybe with Dark Flash, then you can finish it off with the Sky Scorching Light GX. 120 plus 60 is 180 damage. We've also got two Dawn Wings Necrozma GX in here. Dawn Wings is the MVP of this deck. I mean, it's just amazing with that invasion ability, being able to rush into the active position so you can use Malamar, Psychic Recharge to whoever you want on the bench, then retreat with a Float Stone. Also, this card just gets out of the gates very quickly. A turn two Dark Flash happens all the time with this deck. You can have the Dawn Wings on the bench, promote something like a Malamar, things like that. You can have Malamars in the active position you can have whatever you want in the active position attached to this thing turn one get off just one psychic recharge and a manual attachment turn two and then you're rocking the invasion in for the dark flash on the second turn of the game that's awesome if you happen to fall behind moon's eclipse gx is also an amazing option to have and i love that zach plays choice ban in this list so that you can moon's eclipse gx things uh that have 190 200 and 210 Hit points for knockout. You can Moon's Eclipse GX, Lycan Rock GX. That's huge. You can Moon's Eclipse GX Ultra Necrozma. That's also huge. Being able to Moon's Eclipse GX for over 180 damage is awesome. So I do like the inclusion of Choice Band in here. Two Tapu Lele is great because we could search out the Tapu Lele 
with those mysterious treasures. So I do like the inclusion of two. A lot of the times the problems I have with this deck is that it doesn't have any bonus draw or anything like that. There's no sort of a Rangaroo, no sort of Octillery, but with two copies of Tapu Lele and four copies of Mysterious Treasure and three copies of Ultra Ball, we do have plenty of access to draw support with those Tapu Leles. And then occasionally you will get in there with an Energy Drive and you could even use Tapu Cure GX, which can be useful against decks like Greninja Break. So, uh, speaking of Greninja Break, we've also got Giratina promo. I think that this card is excellent in here. I have used Shadow Claw effectively a number of times. I have even used Shadow Claw and ripped my opponent's lone supporter from their hand. I have discarded amazing things with Shadow Claw. Shadow Claw also gets in there and knocks out things like Malamar. You can start attacking early in the mirror with Giratina. You can start attacking into something like a Dawn Wings. It can be an excellent, excellent starter. If you start attacking early with Giratina in the mirror match, your opponent doesn't have a lot of good options options to get rid of it. I mean, sure, they can Photon Geyser it, or they can use their Necrozma GX if they're playing the Psychic variant, but usually decks are rushing in with the Dawnwings Necrozma. So an early Giratina can be difficult to deal with, and then the bonus that it gives you by shutting down Greninja Break is undeniable. So do love Gr Giratina in here, and I'm glad that Zach included it. Uh, as far as the other non-EX, non-GX Pokemon, he plays one of Mimikyu and one of Mew. Being able to copy uh, both Photon Geyser and Dark Flash and Moon's Eclipse, any of these basic Pokemon's attacks with Mew is incredible. I do really, really love that. Heading forward, I think Mew and Mimikyu are options that are flexible in this deck. You could play that promo Mewtwo Sun and Moon 77 in here. You could play the Dawn Wings promo or the, yeah, it's the Dawn Wings promo. Uh, you could play uh, Lunana Prism in here. There's a bunch of different non-EX, non-GX Pokemon to consider heading forward. So I think that these are all on the table. You could even play that Hoopa. Uh, there's the Hoopa from like Steam Siege or something. Is that the set it's from? Pretty sure it's Steam Pretty Siege. Pretty sure it's Steam Siege. I don't know. There's a Hoopa that snipes. Yeah, you can consider that thing as well. And I kind of consider these to be the spots to play with. You could have Mimikyu and Mew. Uh, Mimikyu is great as well, being able to just copycat whatever your opponent's last attack was. Uh, what I don't like about Mimikyu is that A, it does not copy GX attacks and that your opponent can kind of play around it if they know that you have Mimikyu or if they see the Mimikyu on your bench, you know, they can kind of finesse around Mimikyu. So I don't like that as much, but Mimikyu is undeniably good. I mean, especially just to get a quick knockout on something like a Boswell or something like that. If they happen to come hammering in, you don't have a ton of Malamars in play for just two energy. You could copycat and knock out a Boswell, something like that. It's very, very good. Also, Psychic Weak Pokemon, uh, Mimikyu just runs straight through them. So that is excellent as well. That's it for the Pokemon. Let's move on to Zach's support line, show off what he's got. I do love that he plays four copies of Professor Sycamore, obviously the best supporter in this deck, being able to discard your psychic energies, also just hard draw, make sure we're getting as many Malamar into play as possible. Plays three Guzma, my original list were playing three Guzma, then four Guzma became popular, uh, but he's back to three Guzma. I think three or four is the right number. I feel very comfortable with either of those. 2N and 2 Cynthia, which is becoming popular in a lot of decks, popularized primarily by Buzzwool variants, Buzzrock variants, playing just the 2N, 2 Cynthia. I do think that this deck could go up on prizes quickly, so I think that N is not, you know, a card that we're going to play three or four of in this deck, especially since we don't have cards to recover from N, like Octillery or a Rangaroo or something like that. So I think two copies of N is fair. I'd like to see another copy of Cynthia in here, but with two copies of Lele, you know, we do have options as far as draw cards. I do like that Zach included the one of Lily, which was something that I was doing in my early versions of this deck instead of Bridget, but he also plays a Bridget. So we have a bunch of options for turn one. We can either go in with an early Bridget, if that's the best option, or we can go in with an early Lily, if that's the best option. I do like that Lily also acts as kind of like another draw supporter later in the game so i'm actually cool with like the two cynthia and the lily is a great split there i'm i'm cool with that for sure and that's it for the supporters i think this is probably bare minimum as far as draw support i would not play any less than this bridget i'm back and forth on in this deck i think that it's good and then sometimes it's uh not the ideal turn one supporter since this deck doesn't play a ton of supporters you don't always want to lay lay for bridget and also uh, against decks like buzzwool and things like 
like that, you don't want to really have Lele on the field at all because they could just take advantage of that. So it is a little bit sketchy even putting Lele out in the first place. I think Bridget is still something I'm back and forth on, but I do like all the options that Zach has here as far as draw support goes. And three copies of Guzma I feel like is minimum as well. I like four because with that Ultra Necrozma, you like the option of being able to just blow up anything in play. Also, if you happen to be out of a float stone, having Guzma in hand means that you could just promote a Malamar, Psychic Recharge, Guzma something, knock it out. So Guzma is almost always a game-winning card in this deck. Three copies is minimum, but I do think that it is enough at the end of the day. As far as items go, we play four copies of Mysterious Treasure and three copies of Ultra Ball. You can see, decided to skimp on the fourth Ultra Ball there. It's fine. Seven search options is still a lot of search options. I do like a 4-4 split, but if you see all the other things that we got packed into this list, you can see why we had to make a constellation here. Also got three copies of Choice Band. Holy moly, three copies of Choice Band is a lot, but that means that these Ultra Necrozmas are going to be knocking out Zoroarks very easily. Also means that your Dawn Wings is going to be easily taking care of uh, taking care of Pokemon with that uh, Moon's Eclipse GX. Doing 210 damage with Moon's Eclipse GX is also huge. So I do like that at the end of the day. Three copies of Choice Band really helps with the Ultra Necrozma math, especially against those higher Hippo and Pokemon, not having to get a third Psychic Energy onto it. Just blowing things up for two Psychic Energy, a Metal, and a Choice Band is incredible. So I do like three Choice Band in the deck. Also played three copies of Floatstone. Many lists were only playing, were playing four Three is a little bit of a consolation, but it works. It is the minimum. I mean, ideally, you want maximum mobility in this deck, but since this list is more built around just taking huge one-hit knockouts instead of two-hit knocking out things, you can afford to actually miss a turn so long as you get three big GX knockouts in play. Zach also plays two copies of B-String. See why we had to make these constellations here on a float stone, on an ultra ball. Fitting two copies of B-String and three copies of Choice Band in the deck is not exactly easy. B-String is good in this deck when you hit it. I mean, it's incredible when you hit it. Sometimes you need to go find that metal energy for your ultra and a cross, but if your opponent happens to be a four or three prizes, boom, there you go. Also, you might be down a Malamar or something like that and just not have the Malamar you need in play in order to pull off a game-winning attack, but B-String can be your friend there as well. You'll see the Zach's list does not play Max Elixir. I think I'm kind of done with Max Elixir in these lists. I don't really like Max Elixir here anymore. I think B-String is better than Max Max Elixir in the deck. Playing only two copies of B-String sketches me out a little bit because I, I think that, you know, what are your odds of hitting it on those key turns if you're only playing two? That being said, when it works, it works, and it is a great card. Also played two copies of Field Blower to get rid of things like those pesky Parallel Cities and also Tools on Garbodor. Think if you're not playing your own Parallel City, which Zach is not, is chosen to play more aggressive cards, which I do like in an Ultra Necrozma deck. This is not a defensive deck. This is a very offensive deck, a very aggressive list, and I do like that. So two Field Blower is fine. I think that third might be ideal, but obviously there is not room for things like that. So two Field Blower does work just great and allows you to accelerate on you know maybe a couple turns underneath garb lock you could use beast ring to accelerate as well so i do like that that says sometimes you might be missing a malamar because of parallel city sticking or maybe sometimes you might be missing the uh you know the field blower on a garbador's tool but you have beast ring which could come in clutch to save the day i do love two professor's letter in these decks this is kind of growing on me for sure my original list started with professor's letter then i went to max elixir now i'm back on professor's letter professor's letter is fantastic i mean you gotta play it in an ultra necrozma list to get those metal energies out of the deck as well but i also love the combo of professor's letter ultra ball professor's letter mysterious treasure just accelerating those energy to the discard pile to be accelerated with malamar and then one copy of rescue stretcher just in case you got any nasty sycamore discards and things like that that's it for the items moving on to the energy Zach plays 10 cop. Uh, nope, that is not 10. That is three, six, seven copies of Psychic, three copies of Metal, and one copy of Beast Energy. Beast Energy is fantastic as well because it could go not only on your Ultra Necrozma to hit that 
210 number, which is great without a choice band, but can also help your Dawn Wings hit those numbers as well without a choice band. So Beast Energy goes great on Ultra Cosma and Dawn Wings, acting as a rainbow energy, so also counting as a metal energy for that Ultra Necrozma. And then seven Psychic Energy is just enough to make sure with Professor's Letter that we have plenty of Psychic Energy in play to power up our attackers. And that's it for Zach's list. So let me know, what do you think of Ultra Necrozma heading forward into the North American International Championships. You think this deck has the stuff to, that it takes in order to be a top-tier threat in standard format uh, going into the North American International Championships? What changes would you make to this deck? And do you think that this version is better than the all-Psychic Necrozma GX uh, version? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, Check me out on Twitter at EnjoyFriend. Check out all the sweet links in the description below. Peace.